All right, back here with my FT710, and I've added an MFJ939 auto tuner. This is an older model that might have been about 200 when it was new, manufactured before the FT710 came along. So I'm not trying to use an interface cable. I'm just using it as a, quote, dumb auto tuner. And uh, that presented a couple of problems here, so I wanted to share with you my key finding getting this to work in my system here. First off, we're looking at the 10 meter band here. Uh, my SWR on this band at best is about 1.5, 1.6-ish, and it goes up to uh, pretty close to 3 to 1 at the top end of the band. So it's possible to tune it with the internal tuner. However, I would also like to take my 40, 20, 15, and 10 end fed and uh, operate uh, at least on occasion on the 80 meter band and some bands that it's not meant for. So in that case, SWR goes all the way up to 6.7 roughly to one, and it's not gonna be possible with the internal tuner. So we've got this thing here to play with today. The 939, manual says you want to set between 2 and 20 watts uh, to to tune and then you push the tune button between one half and two seconds to initiate a tune. Uh, it will attempt to tune if it notices excess uh, SWR but I want to get everything set up correctly under the conditions described by the manual without too much power. Rather than turning the power up and down uh, I decided to use the AM modulation since max power there is 25 watts for this particular radio. And I can set it wherever I want since I'm generally not using that modulation type at this time. And I can swap back and forth between single sideband and that if I need to update my tune. Uh, it makes it things easy and I won't forget anything that way. So the first thing we need to do is swap over to am and then we need to change our function knob to adjust power right now you can see that it's at level so level basically just allows us to tune the display here so we don't display too much hash and trash and we can see where our signals are so we're going to push straight on that button and um, tap on the rf power and then you'll see rf power listed right there so when we turn that dial we can see the power going up and down. Now the manual says on the tuner between 2 and 20 watts. Now the minimum on this radio that you saw just there a moment ago is 5 watts so we'll, we'll make an attempt right there. So we first need to key up and we can see the radio is keyed up with the red light right there and we push this for one half to two seconds. One, two, and um, notice that it did beep at the end of um, its quote tune there and then we're going to go back to high power just to see how high quality that tune is. So we're going to go to upper side band for 10 meters and uh, we'll key up here and notice that uh, immediately the SWR was nowhere near what it, where it seemed to be and that's where I ran into trouble trying to make this operate correctly. Uh, let's go back over and I'll show you what I found to be uh, very valuable in making this operate correctly. Again, the tuner, we're not using a special cable to connect to the radio, so the radio doesn't actually know that this is here. Uh, and so that's, I think, um, requiring a little bit more testing and uh, understanding in order to make this work correctly. My theory is that there wasn't enough reflection at five watts for there really to be uh, much for the tuner to work with. So we're gonna turn that up to 20 watts here. And again, we'll be keying up and we'll see that. And notice that the tuner immediately started to do some work. And uh, this is the other thing, uh, you can hit tune again to refine that tune. So let's do that, one, two, Notice that the SWR uh, needle over here did move some. One, two. And then the other thing I did that really helped me refine my tune is uh, move to another portion of the uh, band here. Let's We're gonna move up, as I said at the beginning, if you recall, that SWR was higher at the higher end of the band. Just make sure we're not right on top of somebody here. 
turn that back down. And again, we'll be keying up. One, two. There we go. Let's see what happens when we go over to upper sideband at full power. Okay, much, much better. Let's move somewhere else in the band. We'll try it again here and we'll see if we get a different result. So we'll again go over to AM, keying up, hitting tune. Okay, and then we'll try our upper sideband at full power. And we're looking really, really good there. So now we want to move down to 80 meters where things will be uh, significantly more challenging and see what we can get here. Which what you want to be careful about down in any band when you're tuning up is to try not to be on top of somebody else out of courtesy for them, for the noise that you'll make when going through that process. Okay, there we, that seems like we're in, we're in the clear there. So we're going to repeat the process here. A um, um and we're we're at 20 watts there and we'll be keying up. There we go. We got a lot more activity. There's a lot more reflection to measure there. I still have the radio keyed up as you can see right here. We're gonna hit tune again. One, two, one, two. We didn't get any really much more improvement there. One, two, and we'll we'll try a different portion of the band here. We'll go down just a little bit, and looking to try to be in between somewhere. King up. One, two. Okay, that's about as good a match as you could hope to be there. Nearly one to one at this lower power here. Let's go back to lower side band for the 80 meter band which is where we want to be. You can notice we are now at full power, so we want to test that tune. And we're doing so much better, KF0IWN. And you can notice there that the um, SWR is a very nice match. There we have it. This has been a short tutorial on how to add the MFJ939 to the FT710 without using an interface cable. I hope you have found this useful and enjoyable. Leave me a like, and I hope you'll join me for a future video. Talk to you all later.